microsporangium and a microsporogenesis these two terms let's begin with uh, some few main points which are frequently used in this and later we discuss further what are the topics involved in this what are later we shall discuss and uh, let's begin with this which is male gametes known as the sperms are formed within the male gametophyte which also known as pollen grains pollen grains are formed within the microsporangium in majority of angiosperms anthers are tetrasporangiate but in few cases such as such families like marvaceae adoxaceae cestestraceae restoyanaceae epacridaceae in this families the anthers are bisporangiate in 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 other where eight sporangiate are also observed like for example the big cestestraceae in this way, they have absorbed eight sporangiate in 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 some cases where they have absorbed both bisporangiate and tetrasporangiate anthers in some families the those are astraceae arachaceae asclepidaceae celastraceae lemnaceae laurelaceae molinaceae and later these are the main examples of having both bisporangiate and tetrasporangiate these are the few important points that are should be known in this topic and uh, further uh, they have given some uh, more evidence on this topic such as uh, they have observed only one sporangiate in the anther and it is a recorded it has been recorded right uh, it is recorded from right now uh, and uh, it is arsitobium minute sperm it is having only one sporangiate in its anther okay let's discuss and i will give few more in graphical manner okay let's begin with that if you look up at here here these structures denotes the anther the complete transfer section of anther shows this type of where four sporangiate you can see here means tetrasporangiate condition as i have given that uh, already mentioned mainly we can see tetrasporangiate condition mostly but in some families both bisporangiate tetrasporangiate trisporangiate monosporangiate condition also observed in some families so let's go through that in which how the anther wall develops let's look up at here this anther is having epidermis here and uh, endothecium and middle layer which is situated here and inner tapetum and beneath the tapetum is actually covering the microspores present inside so if you look up at here clear way the middle layer which shows the more means it covers most of the growth it shows growth mainly anther wall development takes place in periclinal as well as anticlinal periclinal means it shows more number of layers of the tissue increases anticlinal means cell number increases 
like that and um, mainly Davis who classified this anthermal development into four those are basal type dicotyledonous type monocotyledonous type and reduced type here in basal type in which both means here if you observe in the primary parietal layer is present primary parietal layer is present in which it is having outer secondary parietal layer having endothesium and inner secondary parietal layer having tapetum in which in between middle layer is present where in basal condition both shows middle layer means middle layer is present in both condition but whereas let's look up at dicotyledonous type here primary parietal layer is present but the outer secondary parietal layer is only having middle layer but the middle layer is absent in inner inner secondary parietal layer okay then in monocotyledonous type where the primary parietal layer is divided into two that is outer secondary parietal layer and inner secondary parietal layer where middle layer is absent in outer secondary parietal layer but if you look up at here where middle layer is present in inner secondary parietal layer okay last but not least that is reduced type in which here if you look up at here where they show reduced means middle layer is not present middle layer is completely removed here like that means in outer secondary layer and inner secondary layer where endothesium is present and tapetum is present but it does not show the middle layer in between them so I will list out the examples examples for whereas okay before that in basal type examples for basal type we have they are winter winter ACA VTACA RAMNACA Anacrid ACA TILI ACA these are the main examples which are having the basal type of growth means they have development middle layer having both present in a outer secondary parietal layer and inner secondary parietal layer basal type I have already given and uh, whereas examples for dicotyledonous type it includes unknown ACA asclepid ACA APACA, Solanaceae, Rubyaceae. These are the examples for dicotyledonous type. Whereas monocotyledonous type, it includes Brassicaceae, Orchidaceae, Chinopodaceae. These are the examples for monocotyledonous type. Whereas in reduced type, they have given to the Lemnaceae and Najadi ACA. These are the main important points involved in this. I hope guys this video is helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you.